Hello, welcome to episode 72 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, 1,000 movies you must see before you die, 1930s, The Blue Angel, one of the very first sound films to be made and released in Germany, uh, and directed by Joseph von Sternberg, who we talked about before in this series with Shanghai Express, and he was a guy who was born in Austria, uh, lived in America for most of his life, and in the 20s became a director in Hollywood, made films, uh, one of which um, I know for sure is in the book and I'll be talking about at some point in the future once I've seen it. Um, but this one was an interesting film because it was made in Germany and he was making films in Hollywood and he was asked to come over to Berlin in 1930 to make The Blue Angel as a co-production between uh, Paramount in the US and Ufa in Germany. And they did an, a German version and an English version, uh, which both are presented on the Blu-ray that I've got on the Massive Cinema Collection. Uh, I kind of skimmed through some of the English uh, parts, and I'll talk about that later on, but um, the German version is the one that I watched, and I'm assuming it's probably going to be the preferred one, uh, because all the actors are German. So, uh, The Blue Angel is about um, a professor. Uh, it was based on a book, actually, called Professor Unrat. Uh, which means Professor Garbage or Professor Rubbish, I think, and uh, it's very loosely based off the first half of that novel, apparently, and Sternberg kind of, uh, you know, put it together himself and kind of, I guess, very loosely took some ideas from that uh, and made it into this film, The Blue Angel. And it's about this professor played by Emil Jannings. Emil Jannings is, is one of the, the best actors of the sound era. I've seen him in many films, and he always brings something different to the table every single time. He's a great character actor. Uh, and he's no different in this. He plays this kind of very stuffy, kind of fussy uh, uh, professor, you know, and he works at kind of a second-rate school. The kids are unruly. They don't respect him, um, and he doesn't seem to have a very interesting life, and I loved the, the opening sequence um, where he gets woken up by his, his maid, and he gets up and has his coffee and things like that, and he starts singing to his bird. Starts whistling, I should say and the bird doesn't whistle back and so he, he goes over to the cage and he's, he's whistling you know and he picks out the bird and the bird's dead uh, and he looks at it and he just he just looks at it for a moment and it's quite a touching little moment where he realizes that his bird has died and the maid comes in and says oh yeah that stopped singing back two ages ago and she just takes it and puts it into the uh, <clears throat> into the, the, fi the fire pit you know the, 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 the boiler and she does it so bluntly, you know, but it kind of shows you where he is at his life, you know, again, he's kind of middle-aged, and so you really see uh, how dead his life is almost, that's, that's what I got from it, you know, that it was just, you know, he's just kind of, he's just floating by, and he's, he's, he's very unaware of the world around him almost, and it's just kind of going through the motions at this point, perhaps, uh, and that's reinforced when he gets to school, and the kids are just taking the piss out of him, and and walking all over him and things like that, and it, it's a recurring theme: is how he will he will act stern and he will act tough, and he will say that you know we'll talk about this later, but there never seems to be any real repercussions from that. He's all talk. Anyway, so uh, let's just get, let's just do a, a long form version of the plot here. Um, Professor Rat or Rath uh, in the film. And actually, to go back to the original novel, uh, Professor Unrat, um, which means Professor Garbage, Rubbish, whatever, um, as, as his name in the film, The Blue Angels, Professor Rat, uh, they write Un on his, uh, on his name on his book, so it's Unrat, and they call him uh, Professor Garbage in the film. So that kind of ties into the, the, the original title of the, the original novel, on which this is loosely based on. So uh, he starts to notice that the boys in his class are kind of fawning over these pictures, uh, these postcards of this woman. Uh, and so he, he soon figures out that all the boys in his class are going down to this bar called the Blue Angel to see this girl called Lola Lola. Uh, and they're kind of, you know, just going giddy over this girl who's singing on stage and in various stages of undress, uh, which to us now would be very tame, but I'm sure at the time was quite erotic and exotic. So um, he follows them down there. And that, this is where you get kind of little tiny glimpses of like German expressionism and stuff. Very, very small, but like when he's going through the, the cobbled streets you know at late at night to, to the Blue Angel and you see some of the rooftops that are very kind of unreal in, in their shape and stuff and it just feels like um, the people who worked on it perhaps the crew that Sternberg was working with um, were kind of injecting some of their previous kind of workings on the film I don't know it, it felt like it had that uh, just a toe dipped into German expressionism with the way the film looked in some scenes uh, once we get to the Blue Angel, which is one of the main locations of the film, um, this bar, uh, which I loved. I loved the, the setting of it, and I loved um, when the professor goes backstage, he's looking for the boys and stuff, and he's trying to catch them, and he bumps into Lola Lola, played by Marlena Dietrich, who um, was somewhat of a, 
I, I guess, well, she, she, she is a very famous actress. Um, she had a very interesting career, and this film made this film made Marlena Dietrich famous. Uh, she went to America and made many more films with Sternberg, uh, Shanghai Express being one of them. Uh, and I guess, you know, she, she, she never really got huge, but she was definitely a star at this point once this film had been made and released. And for many years, she continued to kind of make small appearances in other films, including... Touch of Evil, which I just reviewed a few videos ago, and she was in that film. I didn't even realize it. How cool is that? I, I really wish I'd known. I would have enjoyed Touch of Evil all the more because um, she has a very small but kind of um, uh, cool role in Touch of Evil. But, um, you know, she sporadically appeared in films throughout the rest of her career. But I think that this is kind of the golden period when she first got big in The Blue Angel and made uh, a string of films with uh, Joseph von Sternberg, this being the first one. And her performance as Lola Lola is is definitely a highlight of the film. She's very, um, very kind of fiery uh, and very much kind of a femme fatale, I suppose, in this film. And she really uses her sexuality uh, as a character, you know, to kind of get what she wants. And she, she, ha she has a charm to her. There's an undeniable charm to her. I mean, she looks beautiful, obviously. Uh, and the way that she sings on stage, you know, she's suggestive. Uh, and when she kind of meets the professor, Emil Yannings' character, um, and that's really where the, the film starts to really um, get into something. And I do feel like the film does drag in places. I will say that there are times when the the pace is is it's going at a snail's pace. Like there's scenes in the in the in his classroom, in the professor's classroom, where he just well not even him. I don't know why I said he, but just like the, well yeah even him. There's there's scenes where he'll sit down and he'll pull out a rag and he'll blow his nose and then he'll you know dab his face and then put it back in his pocket and, and things like that and it just it goes on and on and on. Um, you know Sternberg really takes his time with this film and uh, it didn't bother me, but I definitely was aware of it. You know, uh, and yeah, the relationship between him and and Lola Lola, uh, the professor and this this young girl. Um, this performer on stage um, was is the core of the film and it's where that relationship goes and where it begins to change the professor uh, and how besotted he becomes over her and, and how, how stupid and uh, you know giddy with glee he is that uh, this girl is taking any interest in him whatsoever and how it kind of um, changes things for him forever and I'll, I'll go no further than that uh, I love the setting of the Blue Angel bar and, and how the scenes in kind of the dressing room where he would talk with Lola Lola uh, I'll just call her Lola because it's just it's it, yeah. When he's in the, the dressing room with Lola, uh, there'll be other performers. It's not like you get a ten minute scene with them talking in the kind of dressing room. You'll get a ten minute scene with them talking in the dressing room between people coming in, people coming out, the, the stage door opening. You're hearing people sing on the stage, and then we'll we'll cut to the stage and we'll see other performers, and we'll cut back inside, and then other people are opening the door and saying, "Come on, you got to go on stage." And then clowns coming in and looking at him, and all this. The, it, it was it felt so alive. It really felt like that club was a living breathing entity in the film and I totally bought that they were in a club and not in this room you know it's a set I really loved the, the character of that place and one of my favorite parts of the film is when uh, the professor stays the night and he gets up in the morning and uh, Lola makes him some breakfast and some tea and things like that and I, I noticed this only when I watched um, bits of the English English version uh, he's sitting down having tea with her and he's very happy and stuff and and clearly is, is kind of really taking a liking to her and you hear a bird chirping in the background and I suddenly thought man that kind of really links back to the beginning when you know we first see him and to me it felt like it, you know as a person he was just dead at that point you know he was just going through the motions and the bird dying was very much a symbol of that you know that he was the world was just passing him by and he was barely even noticing what was going on and then this bird chirping at that moment when he has that breakfast with her and it's like he's come back to life again I feel like um, and so I thought that was nice even if I'm just looking into that that's something I, I found a, a quite a cool link there I think between the, the birds singing uh, and I thought that there was something to that now I can only go into spoilers when I, it comes to my thoughts on the rest of the film but um, I, yeah, I will say that Emil Jannings was, was phenomenal in this film uh, probably the best role I've seen him do so far the transformation that he goes through um, is just staggering, you know, and the way he performs it is just, um, it's, it's sublime, it really is. And Marlene Dietrich is, is great for what her role is supposed to be. 
uh, a frustrating character for sure and a frustrating relationship between the two as well which really goes in places I wasn't really expecting it to go is it a film you want to see before you die? absolutely I think it's 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 very well made uh, the pace there probably is issues, issues with the pace I think that it does drag a little bit but then again me looking at it with tw 2016 eyes it's going to seem slow paced but then again I watch films from much earlier than this and the pace is fantastic so I don't know but I just I feel like yeah maybe the pace is something to criticize slightly that it takes its time a little bit too much maybe uh, and it does take a dramatic kind of tonal shift about halfway, maybe two thirds of the way through the film. Now, most films are supposed to do that, but I mean, it really just like, uh, I wasn't expecting it to go where it went, to be honest. Um, but is it a film I see before you die? I would say yes, because it's an impeccably well-made film. It has two great performances in it. The, the rest of the supporting cast are fine, you know, and play their parts for what they are. But it's great to see Dietrich in this role. Uh, she's just great. I think she she has an on-screen charm to her. Uh, and Emil Jannings is just, you know, just a phenomenal actor. One of the best guys around at this point. I think he'd already won an Oscar at this at this point in time. Um, and surely must have been the first non-American to win, I suppose. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do some double-checking on that. But, yeah, an acclaimed uh, actor at this point. And it's not hard to see why. So... Thank you for watching, if you don't want to hear any more spoilers, and now we're going to get into some spoiler talk. So, uh, yeah, they get together, they hook up, uh, and they get married. I wasn't expecting that, you know, um, it moves very quickly, you know, you can tell there's, there's flirting going on between them, and she's really, maybe, is she leading him on or not? I don't know, I, I'm really not sure where Lola felt, uh, and how she felt about, um, about the professor, about you know, Emmanuel Rath, uh, because it's hard to read. It really is. Is she just is she just playing him for a fool? But then what does she gain from it? You know, or does she really love him? It's hard to tell. And and, and you see her character, who is someone who surely at this point in her life, who was just traveling around and just just dancing in in you know in scantily clad clothes to to men who are whistling and jeering at her. That's her life, and you you've got to think that maybe. Um, part of her has been broken by that, you know, but she she definitely seems to like him uh, and he obviously is besotted with her um, but it moves very quickly and, and he says, will you take my hand in marriage? and she just laughs in his face like that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard and then they get married and so it's like, well, what's going on here, you know? and so they get married and he kind of um, has kind of shamed himself in the community and, and he loses his job as a teacher because he's, he's hooked up with this hussy from the Blue Angel bar and then he goes off traveling with her around the country to, you know, to, to follow her. She goes to different clubs and does the same acts every night and things like that and you see the slow transformation of him to, to being this utterly humiliated man and, and is robbed of all of his principles and morals, you know, like he, he will say that, you know, I don't want you doing this, you know, I don't want you, you, I don't want these postcards of your picture to be sold to men, and you just see, I mean, just the way that his hair is, is put, and the way that he dresses, and they even say to him, you know, you take, have a shave, you know, he's slowly just disintegrating as a person, to the point where at the very end, um, we get this very cool transition that shows that four years have passed, and he is now a clown, uh, and he barely speaks in the last half hour of the film, he is just morose, um, just dead inside once again, you know, and, and it's that full circle thing, but it's now he's dead inside and he's humiliated and he's lost everything. And she doesn't seem to have much sympathy for him, and he goes out and they, they, they return to the Blue Angel after so many years, and it comes back again full circle, and he has to go out in front of all the people who know him as Professor Emmanuel Rat, and, uh, and he gets humiliated even further, as the, the clown, the dunce, the, the, the butt of the joke and and then she starts hooking up with another guy uh, very much in front of him, very much to antagonize him and he absolutely loses his shit and then we follow the ending where he you know he stumbles back to his old school classroom and just dies at the desk. It is a fucking bleak film, it really is um, and there's so much kind of joy in the first half where you get to see him come to life through Lola um, and the way and the, the 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 numbers that she sings on stage, you know, the one that kind of really makes him fall in love with her, uh, is sung as he's leaving the Blue Angel to to walk off to his death. And the way that she performs it is very different in the the second time at the end. Even the way she's dressed in these black black clothes, and she seems a lot more cynical as she's saying it, and almost a lot more vicious, and and more kind of hard and cold and. It, it's a real bleak ending, it really is. I don't know what you read into that and stuff, but 
you know, for me, it was a great film, um, but perhaps a bit too bleak. You know, like it just halfway through, it just suddenly turns into this, this, this drawn out, like half hour long humiliation and destruction of this character until he dies. Like it's, it, there's no redeeming moment at the end of this film. It's all. It's all gearing towards the the untimely demise of the professor, who, in one way or another, kind of gets killed by this woman. <laughs> it's 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 really it's out there. I wasn't expecting it. I'll give I'll give it credit there. I wasn't expecting it to end like that, but um, you know it was what it was. Uh, I watched some of the English version, uh, and I, that blows my mind that they would film the scenes in German then in English again. But a lot of the scenes are kind of the same as the German um, prints, you know, and the people people speaking English. Um, but you get uh, a lot of the dialogue um, in English, particularly from Emil Jannings and Marlene Dietrich, who speak English pretty well. And it's, it's, it's intriguing to see them do those scenes in English. Um, but I definitely think that that's more of a curiosity than anything, and that the German version is probably, uh, definitely, the, the, the definitive version to watch. And I would highly recommend it to anyone. Um, and uh, once again, I've fallen into the trap of saying I recommend this film after I've told you about three minutes of spoilers. In which case, you're probably not going to go and watch the film because I've either spoiled it for you or you've already seen it. Ah, I talked about this film way, way too long. I, but I really, really liked it and I'm looking forward to revisiting it and, and hopefully knowing where it's going, perhaps prepare myself for, for the bleak ending. I mean, but it didn't move me in any way. I didn't feel uh, like I connected with the professor that much to the point where it was sad to see him be humiliated. It was just uncomfortable at times and and kind of felt maybe a little bit too drawn out towards the end, maybe a little bit, just maybe a little bit of him just looking so forlorn and, and silent, um, though that was the point. So anyway, thank you, thank you for watching the video, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you with the next one.